I'm Sal and this is Sal's Tech. Today we're talking about the End of 5 Pro. My last video was about the End of 5 Plus. Now we're talking about the Pro and the Sprite Extruder and Clipper with the Sonic Pad. Pretty much the same setup, only on the Pro, which is half the size of the Plus. The Pro is basically an End of 3 turned into a box. So you don't have a bed slinger anymore, which is really nice. It's like a Quarx Y, but it is not. It's still a Cartesian pre uh, printer. This takes more work to do than the Plus. The Plus was pretty easy to do. This isn't difficult, but it does take a lot more work. Placing on this isn't as heavy duty as the Plus. So I did print supports for this because on the Plus, you got 20 by 40s here. This is a 20 by 20. The other difference is it's doubled up on the side with the Z plate. Okay, because it has dual Z screws, okay, so there's an extra 20 by 20 bolted to the side. So it's triple bolted over here. It's really thick. On this, it's only a 20 by 20. That's it. It's the same size as your, uh, your gantry. I mean, that's the whole thing. If you pick one of these up and you pick one of those up, this is half the weight. There's a reason why it's half the weight. It's not just half the size, but it's half the strength. It didn't need any angle supports or anything like that, but it did need some extra stuff. Not a lot. But a couple of things just like on the plus i did move the railing down okay which makes it a lot easier to level your bed and everything like that the other thing that i did to this is there are supports for the bed because if you know anything about these beds if you touch them they're like a diving board they just go ding the ding the ding not very good these supports are on thingiverse you can download there and print them out i highly suggest it at the very least then i also these don't come with any insulation on the bed I would suggest you buy the insulation and put it on the bed. The only reason I'm saying that is because it heats up faster. It's a small bed, it heats up fast anyway, but it holds the heat, you use less electric, and it heats quicker. It's all about speed for me. I don't like waiting. I'm very impatient. I shouldn't say I'm impatient. I just don't think it should take that long. And unlike the Plus, this is screwed into your gantry, so you're going to need a T-nut to move your, your uh, X end stop, which is no big deal. So basically, I'm going to do like I did on the last video. We're going to do photos with a, me speaking throughout and explaining everything that's going on. This does have a different motherboard and it's different wiring. Uh, there's a couple of different things that you have to do to this. So have laid out a die grinder, a, a digital caliber, and a set of channel locks. Those are the only other tools you need other than what comes with this printer. Everything else is great. Just like on the other, call, on the other uh, printer, I have my sonic pad mounted right here and it's great for time lapse because the camera sits right where it needs to be to get the time lapse on it which works out really great um, so like i said everything in here is the, pretty much the same now you don't have to put a sonic pad on here it will work fine you can actually go right through your menu on the screen on this and put your know, four by 20 400 by 24 uh steps for the printer itself for the head and everything works the same and it's just a matter of offsets and like that with this it's actually the top part of it is as easy as in the plus, but the rest of it is not. So I'm going to go over everything with you in the video, and I'll be back at the end to explain my thoughts. All right, let's start off with you only need three extra tools other than the tools that come with the printer. That would be a cutoff wheel, which comes on a Dremel, a die grind, uh, which is a die grind basically, a digital caliper, and a pair of channel locks. The next thing you're going to see is the original plate. Okay, this is your mount plate for your hot end, and I'm showing you the back side. If you mount it like this, this is completely wrong. It's got to be flipped. And the reason you're doing this is just to see where the holes are. Once you twist them, you can see where the welds are, and you can grind the back. And once you grind off the welds and everything like that, the two pins that held your hot end on can come out. And they come out pretty easily once you grind the back down. And this is the way it should look once you install it. It's flipped around from the original way it came in the printer. Makes a big difference. And the same to the offsets. The next piece is the plate that comes in your extruder kit. You're going to cut two tabs off. Now, if this was a CR10 or an Ender 3, they'd be fine. But since this is neither, this is an Ender 5 Pro, you have to cut these two pieces off because they're in the way. And you're going to see how it mounts. It mounts really easy. Um, the two pieces that come off, we have a little tab on one side and another piece that looks like a triangle. And I have a photo of that coming up so you have an idea what it should look like when it comes apart. These are your two pieces that you removed. They were both for the belt that you no longer need. Don't worry about it. Throw them away. And this is how it goes together. It's very simple. 
you're going to take the three V wheel mounts and you're going to slide them right through both plates and you're going to bolt it together. Like I said, the original plate has to be flipped and that's, that's the offset. I also moved the BL touch here because the head on this is 38 millimeters deeper than the stock one. It's a big difference. And I mounted something else in place of the BL touch in the front anyway, which is coming next. So what I did is I mounted my Shaper uh, accelerometer on it instead of the BL touch. It's a great place to mount it. It's solid. It don't move. It doesn't vibrate. It's a good mount. And I get a good reading from it. It works out beautifully that way. So after you do all this, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to mount your head. There's four screws that mount your head. Now, just like anything else, you're going to snug them down, don't go crazy, and you should crisscross from left to right and then from left to right. And it goes in nice. The next thing you do is you're going to remove the wire holder or retainer. Take the two screws out. Once you remove that piece of plastic, put the two screws back where it was. The reason you're doing this, it does hit the plate if you leave it where it was stock. So what you're going to do, you're going to put it over the lock tabs, and it actually holds the lock tabs in place, which is great. Okay? You take a wire tie, one wire tie, hold it in place. Not only does it hold the cable from flexing, but it keeps the locks from, remo from uh, loosening up and popping out. You don't have to worry about your cable flying. It's really nice. Works out really well. So the next thing we have is you got to move your X end stop about 3 millimeters to the right. This was bolted into the gantry, so all you need to do is use a T-nut, 1, 2, 3, you move it over. No big deal. You're going to take the top bar, we're going to move it down six inches. That gives room for the sonic pad and for your, your, your time-lapse camera. The time-lapse camera mounted on the sonic pad is actually the perfect height to do your time lapses. It's great. It worked out really well this way. I have the same way on the plus. It works out very, very nice. A couple things we had to do by moving this down. This, this casing is, or this frame isn't as strong as the plus. So I made some actual brackets for this. Uh, there's four of them that you have to print. There's two left and two right. Same brackets for up, error, and lower. So what this does, is it does attach the 20 by 20 bar to the by 20 by 40 on both pieces. And it looks a little cleaner, to be honest with you. And it will fit the plus as well. I just made these for this, uh, but they fit the plus as well. And it doesn't need it, but it looks better. The next thing we're going to talk about is your bed. The bed doesn't come insulated at all. It should be, but it doesn't. Uh, the other thing I do is I take the knobs and I flip them upside down. The reason I flip them upside down is because it's a flat area on the top side and it's more friction and it doesn't let the bed wobble because you got more space on this thing. The other thing is on this, these are two bed holders underneath. They're from a thingiverse. You definitely should put these on here at the very least because this thing's like a springboard if you don't. Uh, the next part is I also use the silicone standoffs. This is a set it and forget it type of thing. You can also see how the, the screw, the knobs are flat against that plate. So the bed can't shift one way or the other. So even if it gets hit or whatever the story is, it will not move. And this is a set it and forget it. Once you do your bed leveling on this, it's done. Next is wiring. The wiring goes, unlike the plus, the wiring for this is long enough. It goes right in exactly where the original wires went which works out perfectly on this. So you're going to run the wires inside the housing through the original hole on the casing. And then we're going to start wiring from the inside. This motherboard is different than the Plus. The first thing you have to put is your, thermo your thermostat goes on the end one right there. You can see the arrow. There is hot glue on these. Please peel off that hot glue before you try to remove these pins. You will break the motherboard and you're going to have a bad day. Believe me when I tell you, don't do it. Remove that glue. The next is you're going to have your heat for your hot end, which is the first two wires, and they do matter. Positive is positive and negative is negative. It's shown just like that. So the first pins towards the, the casing there are your hot end. Okay? Then you have your fan, which is also hot as on this last picture, which works out fine. Then you have your extruder plug, which is pointed right there. Make sure you remove that hot glue. It's a big deal. Trust me do it. The next thing is a couple of models that I printed, okay? Um, a daredevil helmet, a couple of Iron Men and everything, and here's the times. See if you can match it. The helmet took 3 hours and 17 minutes. The Iron Man standing was 2 hours and 47 minutes. 
The failure is because I stopped it. I didn't like the first layer. And then the Iron Man with the pose was 3 hours and 47 minutes. Stock printing is over four, 12 hours on that one. The cube was 18 minutes. The other cube was 23. Well, I hope you liked the video and everything you're watching and you've seen. And if there's any questions, ask below. you also find me on forums and Facebook. Now, this isn't as fast as the Plus. I'm going to be honest with you. This is fast, but it's not as fast as the Plus. Now, I printed Iron Man here in under four hours. Okay, and if you go look it up and you go print it the way this printer should do it stock, it's over 10. Even thinning out stuff and walls and this, that, and the other thing. Every, everything you set up in Cure, it's still a good 10 hour print. This got done, I believe, in 3 hours and 38 minutes or 39 minutes, which is pretty quick. Um, this Iron Man, okay, was done in 2 hours and 30 something minutes. Well, 38 minutes, some 30, yeah, 38 minutes. Um, cubes. This was, I believe, a 15-minute print. And this big test cube itself, right here, was 18, 18 minutes maybe, maybe 20. I don't know, it's in the, it's in the video itself, you'll see. Um, I took pictures of everything like that. Now, I do a lot of testing with smaller stuff just to make sure everything works correctly. This was a quick print too. Uh, I think this was four hours. Um, and this was at 50%. Okay, which is itself is too small even at 100%. You got to print it at 110 just so you know if you want to fit your head. Um, you know, Deadpool, everything, it prints fast. Everything in this thing prints fast. It is at least three times to four times faster than in stock. The only thing I didn't like about this is the uh, Y stepper motor seems to be a little weak. I bought this printer at a, um, a Reman, so I don't know if the, the stepper motor itself is bad. So I ordered one for a plus. And I'm going to replace it with that because this thing does boogie. I mean, it, it, it started skipping steps. So it was as fast, but it then started skipping steps. As It was as fast as the Plus, it started skipping steps. So I, I backed it down. And um, there's a couple other details that I'm going to be doing to this later on, and that'll be a different video, like LED lights on the head and stuff like that. So please subscribe. I appreciate it. Like I said in my first video, I was an ASE master tech. I have a different way of looking at things, and I was paralyzed from the uh, coronavirus. Spent 18 months in the bed, so I had to stay sane somehow. So I decided to turn my my time to this because it took my mind off of things, which is it's been great for me. It's been therapeutic, if you want to say that. So I appreciate you guys watching. Hit the like button below. Hit subscribe. Thank you so much for your time. See you at the next video. Bye bye.